Hey guys, my name is Jose, aka Joe Engineer. Thanks again for joining me on another very special video. It's actually a very uh, momentous occasion for me uh, as a, an engineer uh, because I get to share with you um, the very first uh, air-cooled Porsche 911 um, aftermarket product that I have designed and developed myself. Um, and I plan on offering to the rest of the air-cooled Porsche 911 community, especially the, the DIY folks that like to wrench on their own cars. Um, the, the product uh, that I have here in my hand is a little, a little NACA duct that um, replaces the side marker um, uh, parking lamp on your um, on the front impact bumper uh, next to the, the turn signal. And what this does is it swaps out in place of the, the, the factory light and obviously introduces air um, from the front of the car into the duct and directs it uh, directly in front of the oil cooler so that um, you get additional um, air pressure uh, flowing uh, in front of the oil cooler to give you um, additional um, additional oil cooling. And in my testing, um, lots of road testing on, on different uh, different types of driving conditions and, and uh, temperatures, I was able to get up to nine degrees uh, reduction in oil temperature. Um, driving at highway speeds uh, during a heat wave during a Southern California triple digit temperatures. Um, nine degrees is not a ton of cooling, but we air cooled Porsche 911. People will take any little bit of extra cooling that we can get um, in order to, to keep our engines running at the, at the proper temperature. So I'll take that as a win uh, regardless. And this thing is a, it's a, a 3D printed uh, plastic duct that has kind of a kind of a satin uh, black finish on it that I think works pretty well with all of the uh, surrounding plastics, uh, black plastics that are in in the impact bumper area, including the uh, the front bumper strip, the the smile, the accordions, and and everything else. So it kind of it, it kind of works well in that uh, in that space the way it is. Um, you can paint it if you want to. If not, you can run it the way it is. It's UV and chemical resistant. Uh, and I think it looks great uh, the, way it, the way it does in its, in its, or in its bare, bare uh, raw state. Um, it has two, two M5 studs. It installs exactly like the, the part that we're replacing on the car, the side marker uh, light. And um, yeah, let me, let me walk you through the process. Uh, one last thing before I forget, uh, on my car, um, this is a 1983 SC, 3-liter, uh, basically stock uh, engine. Uh, the oil cooler that I have up front is the, the brass 28-tube oil cooler, no fan or anything, and no other um, additional uh, cooling aids. Um, it gave me about 9 degrees of, of cooling improvement um, at triple-digit temperatures. Everyone's oil cooling performance may, may vary, obviously, uh, depending on the displacement of your engine. Your compression, what kind of oil cooler you have up front, um, et cetera, et cetera. But um, uh, at the very least, it'll, it'll look super cool in that um, in that uh, spot with its uh, period correct uh, Naga duct uh, '80s kind of uh, kind of styling that, that works with the with the G body. So let me walk you through the install process. It's super easy. Okay, so how do we install our little uh, Naga duct? Uh, all the tools that you will need um, are basically just a, a ratchet with a eight millimeter socket, a another 13 millimeter uh, socket or a 13 millimeter uh, box wrench. Um, what you need to do first of all is remove this piece on your bumper. If your car is a US car, this will be a kind of a parking lamp or kind of a sort of a side marker light that turns on when you are running uh, your your lights. 
this has power, um, has a, uh, a pair of wires that, that collect power from your turn signal. So the first thing we need to do is get behind the bumper, remove two M5 nuts from the back, unplug the, um, the, the wiring from behind this light, and then, uh, and then this will pull out. Before we get started, get a pair of jack stands and pick up the front end of the car. Um, a little bit, not, not a ton. Um, you can prop the jack stands under the, the torsion bar front covers. And you just need a little bit of clearance to get your head under here. Make sure you chalk the wheels in the back, leave the parking brake on and the shifter in, in gear before you get under here. Uh, take all safety precautions to make sure that your uh, setup is, is safe before you get underneath the car. And as you can see, there are a few things going on here. You've got your oil cooler, which mine is right there. You can see it's a 28 tube oil cooler. You've got the horns. You've got, you can see the back of the, the lamp that we're about to remove right there. You can see the Bosch yellow sticker. And there are two bolts. However, um, one of them is partially obscured. You can see one on the lower right corner. And there's another one that is behind this this metal plate, this black metal plate that you see here. Uh, that black metal plate is an aluminum extrusion that is there kind of like a, it's kind of like a bash plate to protect the oil cooler in case of a front end collision. So in order to get access to the bolts to remove the, the light housing, you need to first remove that plate. And there are four bolts there. One, two, And two more on the other side. There they are. Um, you can use a 13 millimeter socket or wrench to take those off. Once you take those off, that plate will come loose. And you can, at that point, fish the plate out from the bumper, kind of over here by the front of the bumper, by the horns. Or you can fish it out through the back between the oil cooler and the side of the bumper, the accordion, towards the tire. Uh, but either way, it's very easy to remove. It's not heavy. Take those four bolts off, and then you can slide the plate out of the way, and you will see both of the bolts um, for the light housing. Then you take them off with a eight millimeter wrench, and the housing should now be loose. Also, the back of the housing that you're about to remove is going to have a wire that connects over to the, the blinker, which is right there, the turn signal. Now, see where those two little uh, spade terminals are? Uh, that's where you will disconnect the, the two wires that are connected to the um, to the light housing. So you unplug it from there and then at that point you can push the, the housing uh, out from the front. Now, one thing to note is that those two terminals are, are live. Um, they Since they supply the, the power to uh, the light. So since they will remain live, you will need to cover them with a pair of um, spade terminal uh, caps of, of, of some kind and I will supply in the kit these uh, spade terminals that you see with uh, the end plugged with uh, epoxy so that they are uh, sealed from the weather. So make sure that you put those uh, caps on so that there's no risk of a, of a short or those um, uh, connectors uh, corroding. At that point, then you could push the light out from the front. And then it'll just pull out from here in this fashion. Kind of finagle it with both fingers and then you should be able to pull it, pull it out. 
this will pull straight out and the wire will be dangling. You pull the wire out as well and then you will be confronted with this gaping hole with four, uh, four holes here in the front. Now at this point, what you want to do is you want to go back under and mount this bash plate back on with the four, um, the four uh, bolts with the 13 millimeter wrench. Here's the wire that is attached to the back of the housing in case anyone is wondering. This side is inside the housing and you'll see this side dangling out with two spade connectors that are covered in in a with a rubber covering. Mine is already disassembled because I already had it out, but this is basically what you're looking at. So after putting your bash plate uh, back on, we will be using this hole and this hole to install the NACA duct. However, we need to drill one hole in the aluminum bash plate. So after you put your bash plate back on, just with the, bolt, the nuts or the bolts on finger tight, you want to go ahead and run guest center punch and on this front top hole, put a center punch through it and punch a center mark in the, in the aluminum plate or get a drill about this size. Uh, a quarter inch drill is perfect. Um, and basically match drill another hole through this plate using this hole in the front as a guide. So after you drill the hole and you um, punch it through this plate, then remove all the chips, make sure there's no sharp edges, um, and then you'll be ready to install the, the housing. If you want, you can just make a center punch mark or a scratch here, and then you can take the plate out um, and on a bench, you can drill it yourself and deburred and do all that good stuff. As you can see, I've already drilled my hole here, but um, again, it's just a easy to drill hole in this aluminum plate and you're not making, you're not drilling any holes permanently into the chassis itself. This plate is a separate, a separate part of, um, uh, of the front bumper. Then once you're done drilling that hole, you want to go ahead and grab your neck duct and you can see that it has two studs poking out the back a short one and a long one and you want to install the duct obviously in this way you want to line up the long stud through the hole through the top hole and through the hole you just drilled and then line up the back stud with the upper rear hole as well and give it a little a little push and it'll fall in place now what you want to do is get a piece this has roughly the same clearances as the the front uh, blinker so what you want to do is get a piece of plastic or something shove it under under here shim it so that it's at about the same height so that you get a nice consistent gap um, around the top and bottom and now you will go underneath and you will install uh, two nuts on the back so that uh, you can secure it permanently so before you insert the duct um, after you've drilled the hole make sure you tighten down the the four bolts holding on the uh, aluminum plate uh, i don't have a torque spec for them but um just just hand hand tight pretty tight is is, is uh uh seems to be pretty good then after you insert the duct from the back the studs will poke out through the new hole that you made on the plate and another one down way over there which you could see right in the back in that recess which is precisely in the hole um, in that aluminum plate <laughs> now this is the best um, position that i could come up with i made so many different prototypes and this one is is 
the easiest install method that I could think of. So back over here on the front, you simply put on a washer and the included nylon nylock nut and snug that down. Uh, it's a it's an M5, so it doesn't need a whole lot of torque on it. Just snug it down, and and that should be good enough. On the other side, because the clearance is so tight back there, um, I've given you two options. You can either put a washer and a regular hex nut, or a washer and a wing nut. The wing nut is very once you get it on there and you spin it on, you could spin it on and just push it with your fingertip to, to torque it down. And then with another fingertip push, you can take it off. However, getting it on there on the threads is a bit tough because that space is cramped and there isn't a lot of room. Uh, the easier option for me is to spin on the regular hex nut. Now, not the nylock, put the nylock on the front uh, because that one is much easier to get to, so you want to make sure you keep the nylock there. And put the regular hex nut on the back side there and spin it on with your finger, finger tight as much as you can, and then get a little itty bitty eight millimeter wrench, and you will have to tighten it um, snug tight, partial turn by partial turn. Now, bear with me, this will be a little bit painful. You're gonna get a little tiny itty bitty wrench and at best you'll get maybe like an eighth of a turn before you have to flip the wrench over and then do another eighth of a turn over and over and over and repeat until you start to feel it snug down and, and that's it. But um, this is the most secure way to install the duct and also keep the aluminum plate in place so that you can um, continue to have the crash protection benefit of that plate. If you can, you can just delete the plate altogether and the job becomes a whole lot easier, but I don't recommend that because then you have less protection for your oil cooler in, in case of an impact. Another option with that you can study in more detail is in the Bentley, it'll show you how to remove the horns uh, not a difficult process, but you could always remove the horns because literally this, the shaft of this horn or the whatever, this part of the horn here is, makes it very difficult because you can't, it, it's right in the, in the way of getting access to that back, uh, nut. Um, so that's another option. You could take the horns off to get to that nut and then you could put the horns back on. Um, but this configuration with the horns on and the bash plate in place is the closest to factory that that you uh, will will find. And then once you've got those snug down, like I do, you can come back up here and remove your little shim, and the bottom of the duct should be should line up with the uh, blinker and you're pretty much good to go it'll be nice and firm and in place and as you can see there will be a straight shot of air uh, right at the front of the cooler in between the horns so here's the duct installed and out in the sunlight so that you can see how it really blends in with the surrounding rubbers and plastics in the front bumper of the jeep body I think it uh, works quite well and uh, kind of disappears into that area of the bumper, um, which is exactly what I was going for. More of a, a OEM plus, almost factory type of a look. So yeah, I'm super happy with the, the way it turned out and uh, I hope that you like it too. If you'd like to place an order, please get in contact with me via um, Instagram or my website and I'll try to get one to you as soon as I can Thanks everyone If, uh, if you like what you see, please like and subscribe. Please share with Porsche people that you think might uh, uh, Enjoy this and uh, I look forward to bringing this and more uh, future Porsche products for uh, for you guys Thanks. Talk to you soon. See you in the next video.